Hello everyone and welcome to our lesson on maintaining biodiversity. I'm Mrs Jennison and I'm an Associate Director of Science for Outward Grange Academies Trust. Before we start, it would be really useful if you could turn off your notifications so that you are not distracted throughout the lesson. It would also be very useful if you had a pen and paper to hand so that you could take part in the activities during the lesson. This lesson is a part of our pollution problems topic. First of all, we looked at the rising population on Earth and then we went on to look at rainforest destruction, pollution and global warming and their links to the rising population. In this lesson, we will be looking at maintaining biodiversity with links to sustainability. Our challenge for this lesson is to be able to define the term biodiversity. Our aspire is to be able to describe how biodiversity can be maintained. So what is biodiversity? Biodiversity is the variety of plant and animal life in the world or in a particular habitat, a high level of which is considered to be important and desirable. So that means in our habitats and on Earth, we need a high level of variety in our life. An example of this is a forest. And a forest is said to have a high biodiversity if there is a large number of different species of animals living in it. So why is biodiversity important? Biodiversity is essential for human health and well-being, economic prosperity, food safety and security, and other areas critical to all humans and all human societies. Organisms, ecosystems and ecological processes support us with oxygen and clean water. They help cycle carbon and fix nutrients. They enable plants to grow, they keep pests and diseases in check and they help protect us against flooding and to regulate the climate. And all of these reasons are why it is important that we have a high level of variety in the animal and plant life on our planet and in certain ecosystems. Now, biodiversity is unfortunately declining faster than it has at any other time in human history. And you can see the link on the graph on the right, where the red line is the extinction of vertebrates. And as you can see, the extinctions have increased. And the red line is the population on Earth in billions. Now, the trends on both of those graphs are very similar. And as you can see, as the population has increased more quickly towards the end of that graph, so has the extinction of vertebrates. Now, humans represent just 0.01% of all living creatures on Earth. But humans have caused eight, the loss of 83% of wild mammals and half of plants in just the last 100 years, which is a really worrying statistic. And it's all due to how we grow food, produce energy, dispose of waste and consume resources. The way in which we do that is destroying nature's delicate balance and that all species, including ours, depend on that for survival. So it's really important that we are aware of this as we proceed to still have an increase in population and try to ensure that no, this doesn't take place any longer. So I've just got a few questions for you based on what we've covered so far. What is meant by the term biodiversity? What is happening to biodiversity as the po human population increases? And why do you think this is happening?
So what is meant by the term biodiversity? It is the variety of plant and animal life living on the world or in a particular habitat. What is happening to biodiversity as the population increases? It's decreasing. There are more extinctions as the human population increases. Now, if your extinction levels increase, that's decreasing your biodiversity. Why do we think this is happening? It's due to our consumption of Earth's resources. And a few examples are things such as farming, pollution and waste disposal. So now we're going to look at a few examples of our effect on biodiversity and some of the specific things humans have done which have led to a decrease in biodiversity. Because actually, before we can describe how to maintain biodiversity, we need to know how we are affecting it. So the first one we're going to look at is hunting. Now, Hunting, yes, but more specifically overhunting, which means that we are hunting animals at a rate which is quicker than they are reproducing. So they aren't repopulating as we hunt. Um, and killing animals will obviously reduce their numbers and endangers their species. And there are some examples of which humans overhunting has led to the extinction of certain animals. Um, and I'm also going to include some which are at risk. So the first examples are woolly mammoths. And um, woolly mammoths went extinct around 40, uh, 4,000 years ago. And some of the reasons for that would be humans hunting them. Caspian tigers um, went extinct between 1954 and 1959. They're not sure of the exact date um, because obviously these animals were wild, um, but that's around the time we stopped tracking these and stopped seeing them out in the wild. Tasmanian tigers went extinct around 1936. Both of these examples were hunted. And the dodo. So the dodo went extinct in the mid late century in the middle late seventeenth century. Um, there's several reasons for that, but we do think that egg hunting was one of the causes. Now, a couple that are at risk of extinction at the moment, so polar bears, um, there's several reasons for this, but one of the reasons is hunting. There's around between 20 and 25,000 polar bears remaining, um, which seems like a large number, but considering human populations over 7 billion, it's not that big. Um, so there's not that many polar bears left. And... Mediterranean monk seals, they're not extinct yet, but we think there's fewer than 600 of these remaining. So they're just some of the examples of hunting causing or nearly causing the extinction of animals. So habitat loss. Um, habitat loss is a big driver of extinction. Um, often habitats are demolished. For example, to make way for buildings and roads and farms. So that is one way in which we are causing the extinction of these animals by essentially destroying their home. A specific type of habitat loss is deforestation. Um, I've just put an image on the screen there for you where you can see that a large patch of forest has been cut down to make way for farming in that case. Um, and an example that's specific to the UK uh, the UK has lost a quarter of its hedgerows in the last 50 years, but hedgerows are a quite vital ecosystem on, in, in our country. They contain a vast array of wildlife, including many endangered species, and they increase biodiversity. So removing hedgerows destroys their habitats, and some incentives have been put in place to protect those hedgerows now to ensure that those species do not become extinct. So another way in which um, extinction has occurred over the last few years, invasion by foreign species. Now that sounds very different to what it actually is. And invasion by foreign species essentially means introducing a species that is not native to that area into another area. 
So it could be stocking a pond with fish from another part of the world. And that means that ecosystem then has to cope with a threat to its natural order. Now, I have a few examples of these. I'm going to put them on the screen, but I'm going to add in a video that explains some of them. Um, so zebra mussels is one. Um, rabbits is another one. Um, pythons in Florida, um, which are causing huge issues to their ecosystems and eating a lot of their indigenous animals. And one that you may be familiar, familiar with in the UK is grey squirrels. Um, grey squirrels are not native to the UK. We had red squirrels which were native to the UK. Grey squirrels came over and um, we believe on boats from other, other lands um, and eat the same food as red squirrels. So there was a lot of competition and red squirrels are nearly extinct now. So I'm going to insert that video now, which goes through a few more examples and how they've affected different ecosystems. Rapidly growing, consuming, adapting, they conquer. Jeopardizing local economies, threatening human health, and devastating entire ecosystems. As whole rows of cherished landmarks are condemned, brought home to town-dwelling citizens are the rigid precautions being taken by the Department of Agriculture to save this tree from extinction. Invasive species are non-native organisms that cause considerable damage when introduced to a new area. These species compete with native wildlife for resources and thrive at the expense of the local ecosystem. The introduction of invasive species is often associated with human activity. Boats that travel between different bodies of water can carry hitchhikers, such as the zebra mussel. One of the most notorious invasive species in the United States, these rapidly reproducing mussels clog pipes and overtake beaches in the Great Lakes. Some invasive species, however, are introduced intentionally. In the early 20th century, cane toads were brought to Australia as a form of pest control. Today, these poisonous amphibians number in the millions and have caused a decline in native predators on the island. It's not just animals. Bacteria, fungi, and plants can also become invasive. Brought to South Africa in the 19th century, the black wattle is an invasive tree often used for timber and firewood. This beautiful tree and other thirsty invasives are depleting the country's already record low water supply. Because of their impact on human health, ecosystems, and infrastructure, invasive species cost the global economy over a trillion dollars each year. Many measures can be taken to help limit the spread of invasive species, but the most effective method is prevention. By carefully cleaning boats before transferring between different bodies of water, not releasing exotic pets into the wild, and planting gardens with native species, we can help prevent the spread of invasive organisms. Every living thing has evolved to play a specialized role within their ecosystem. In the ultimate balancing act, even one invasive species can drastically tilt the scales. If we stay mindful of our role in the spread of these organisms, we can prevent invasions before it is too late. So you will probably not be surprised to see pollution being mentioned during this lesson, especially as we looked at it in a previous lesson. Um, but I'm just going to include some specific examples of pollution as a threat.
to certain animals in different ecosystems. So pollution contaminates natural ecosystems and again poses a threat to the organisms living in those ecosystems. Now there are some organisms now at risk of extinction um, and I'm just going to talk about three of those although I will say this is not an extensive list. So some of the organisms at risk include loggerhead sea turtles and um, which can get caught up in fishing nets and um, which can tangle them and harm them and put them at threat. Coral, coral which is an organism and it also provides a quite unique habitat and a very important habitat on earth. Coral is endangered due to ocean acidification which is a byproduct of the increasing levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. As that carbon dioxide dissolves into the ocean, it forms a, a weak acid which can damage coral. It's also at risk due to the rising sea temperatures. Um, manatees, which are one of my favourite animals actually, um, manatee populations are at risk due to algae intoxication, winter freezes that affect shallow waters, boating collisions and the loss of their habitat. So manatees are quite highly at risk from extinction as there's quite a lot of pollution affecting their ecosystem. Um, I've tried to swim with those a few times now and each time we've gone we've not managed to find one which is quite sad. Climate change. Again you are probably not surprised that this is on the list Differing temperatures, amounts of snowfall or rainfall and a variety of other symptoms of climate change can all affect ecosystems in a given area. Now again there are quite a lot of organisms at risk here so I have tried to keep the list as short as possible um, but some of the organisms at risk include the American pika, the Adelie penguin, the leatherback sea turtle, koala bears, the Atlantic cod, monarch butterfly, the ringed seal and again our friend the polar bear. So that was just a summary of several things that are affecting biodiversity on our planet. So now it's time to do a little quiz to check your understanding so far. Biodiversity is A. The number of living organisms on Earth B. The variation of living organisms on the planet or in a habitat C. The number of animals on Earth or D. The variation of animals on the planet And the answer is B. The variation of living organisms on the planet or in a habitat as the human population has increased, the biodiversity has A. Increased B. Stayed the same C. Decreased or D. No link between the two And the answer is C. Decreased Which of the following doesn't negatively affect biodiversity? A. Pollution B. Climate change C. Overhunting or D. Breeding programmes And the answer is D. Breeding programmes Breeding programmes are designed to prevent organisms from becoming extinct so to conserve their species Which is not an example of pollution a. Plastic in the ocean B. Burning fuels and releases gas in the air C. Cutting down hedgerows or D. Chemicals from factories in rivers And the answer is C. Cutting down hedgerows Invasive species can cause and I want you to pick two on this one. A. A strain on natural resources. 
B. New mating partners for current organisms. C. Increased tourism. Or D. Introducing new predators to areas. And the answer is D and A. It can cause a strain on natural resources and can introduce predators into the area. So I'm going to give you a slightly longer question to have a go at um, and first before I give you some time to do it I'm going to ask you to bug the question with me. So the first thing we need to do is we need to box the command word and we're being asked to describe. Now when you're asked to describe you need to either say what you see if you have something to describe or say what something is like. So in this case we are saying what something is like. And we are describing how these factors listed below affect biodiversity. And those factors are pollution, climate change, hunting, habitat loss, and invasion by foreign species. So for each of those, you've got to describe the effect on biodiversity.
So, first of all, pollution. Pollution affects biodiversity by contaminating the ecosystems and harming organisms. I have included an example of plastics in there. Climate change affects biodiversity by changing conditions in certain habitats and making them in inhabitable for those animals. And again, I've put some examples in there. Overhunting affects biodiversity as it's killing large amounts of animals and their population can't recover. Habitat loss by destroying habitats, you decrease the area in which the organisms can live. That often forces them to move and compete for resources. And by introducing foreign species from different habitats, you can place a strain on the resources in a habitat or introduce new predators. So that's some examples for you to check your answer against. And we are going to continue looking at biodiversity in our next lesson. And we are going to look at how our food has impacted biodiversity. So that's everything from me in this lesson and I will see you soon.